Welcome to Mail Monday, a weekly series that's not so much about the gameplay. Instead, it's about your questions and my answers to them. Let's get going. PCs versus consoles. Which one? Ah, dangerous topic. Woody, I was wondering what your opinion on PC gaming over consoles. I'm thinking of building my own PC, and I just don't know if it's a good idea with next-gen consoles supposedly coming out next year. Yeah, they're all rumored to drop around Christmas for next year. All my friends are starting to switch to PC, and I don't know if I should too, because I'm going to be spending like $1,000, which is a pretty big investment considering I'm only 14. Please help me, and congrats on a million subscribers. You deserve that. Well, thank you. A lot of people ask me this question, PC, Xbox, PS3, Wii U, you know, where should I, they fall on this spectrum, you know, assuming that they can only have one. And it's a question I get a lot, and I feel like I know the answer to this. I've known the answer to this since I was 14 years old, and they were like, should I get a quad or a dirt bike, you know? And the answer is, get what your friends have. Like, that's the thing. Like, all these things are immensely more fun when you're playing with your friends, and that's, that's the trick to this thing. So, you know, if your friends have all switched over to the PC, I think that's where you belong too. If your friends have all on the Xbox or whatever, I got Borderlands 2 for the PC. And the truth be told, I really played it on the PC because it came free with my new graphics card. And I thought it would be cool, right? You know, because Borderlands is one of those games that does really well on the PC. It's it's not just like a second thought. You know, it's something that they really do and put some thought into. So anyway, I got it over there. And while it played great... I didn't get a chance to play with Socrates. Uh, Joe Lozon wanted to play with me, and it was like, oh, I'm on PC. And my experience wasn't as good as it would have been had I gotten the console version, the Xbox in particular, only because my friends were on the Xbox. So if your friends have all switched over to PC gaming, I think that's where you should go to. Like the, you know, gaming is fun, but a big part of the fun in gaming has to do with enjoying the time of the, the people that you play with. If you're not doing that, then you're missing out on a lot. So uh, there's my answer. Go, go PC. If that's where your friends are, you'll have fun with that. Dealing with girlfriends past, Mail Monday. Hey Woody, I'm 18 and I have the most amazing girlfriend. You can pretty much say that she's my first serious relationship. We've been going out for a little over six months and so far everything has been amazing. Over time, her and I slowly began opening up about our past, exes, personal problems, family, etc. I was okay with talking about most of it, but there was this one part that's bothered me since the day she told me. About a year before we met, she said she had sex with a friend of mine that I know. They weren't dating or anything, and they were just friends at the time. Even though she's had other boyfriends that she's had sex with, though she didn't really love them to be exact, this one bothered me the most. Don't get me wrong. I do hate the fact that it happened with her exes, but the fact that she did it with someone that was not her boyfriend really irritates me. She did tell me partially what happened that night. My friend asked her to have sex. She refused multiple times, but she eventually gave in so it was not rape. She told me that night that she felt disgusted with herself for months but got over it. She said she doesn't regret it because if she did, she would hate herself and it wouldn't have made her who she was today. Now to me, honestly, I think she wouldn't be any different today and if she had just walked out of that house that night. She wouldn't be any different if she had just walked out of the house. This has bothered me so much that over time, I don't like talking to her about it because she mostly tends to overreact and think I'm calling her a whore even though I never do. I'm a virgin and I plan on being one until I'm married and she accepted this fact which is great. She's very understanding and I would hate to have to break up with her over something that she did when I didn't know her. How can I cope with this? Should I talk to her about it? Feel free to use it on Mail Monday. Thanks. I love your videos. A lot of guys have had this thought, right? It's it, it's kind of a natural thing, you know, when you really care for somebody and you've experienced a kind of intimacy with them. I know they haven't had sex yet, but when you know when you experience this this I don't know, tightness, this this thing that um a closeness you start counting like, well, who else has she shared this with? You know, how exclusive a club is it? And um, the deal is women still have value. Their feelings for you that that are still strong, you know, even after they've had sex with somebody else. Uh, Women, you know, the, the support that they offer you, the unconditional undying love they have for you isn't diminished by the fact that they once loved another or in this case you know didn't necessarily love but spent time intimately with another um you know that that's just the deal i think it's a little tougher when it's somebody you know right it's this really exclusive group and then all of a sudden you're like that guy (laughs) and uh you know sure enough yeah you know that guy that's that's just the reality of it you 
need to handle this better. You know, you as the guy, right? She did not do this as some sort of, um, you know, act against you. She didn't know you at the time. And intellectually, you know this, but you're treating her as if she needs to apologize and, and somehow make it up to you, even though, like I said, you weren't in the picture, right? It just, you weren't. So don't look at her like she has less value because she's been with somebody else. You know, you love her, right? She's amazing, you said. That's maybe these are the things that built her into being amazing. You know, maybe this has given her a little bit of perspective that uh, that she wouldn't otherwise have had. It's it's not an all terrible thing, right? She's not damaged. She's just not a virgin. That that's the deal. You in your head get to decide what's next on this thing. You know, do you want this to be a permanent scar on your relationship? Do you want this to be potentially so damaging that it is the downfall of the relationship? You can't continually punish your mate because, you know, you've decided that her past wasn't worthy. That's that's not how this goes. And I think that's how she's feeling. Like, you know, you have like you're holding this over her like you're, you know, expecting an apology or, or something. And that's not what you should be looking for, right? In instead, you should just be looking at how to strengthen your own relationship, how to be the best boyfriend you know how to be, fun stuff like that. Uh, not, you know, how to make her feel like she's properly sorry for what she did before she knew you. And uh, if you don't do that, then, you know, this, this sore just gets infected and it doesn't get any better. So um, you, wrap your head around where you want to be going forward and stop thinking about where you wish it was. Hello, Woody. I'm 15 years old in high school and I get bullied constantly. Because of this, I have frequent thoughts of suicide. Usually this isn't much of a problem, but in the last week I've been getting bullied a lot more and I almost cried at one point. I used to get made fun of by two people, but recently they got two other kids to also make fun of me, and the two new bullies make fun of me a lot more. Before, I could have taken the two bullies, but now that there's four of them, even if I tried to fight them, I'd surely get beaten up. Even two is a tall order. I'm a really nice kid with a decent amount of friends and I'm nice to everyone, even the bullies. But for some reason, they always pick on me because I'm overweight and I can't do anything about it. Then he spends some time talking about which bullies are in which classes and wraps up with this. I've gotten fun of so much that I missed two days by calling home and leaving before PE class. And I have thoughts of suicide regularly because of the stress. I get constant headaches, lack of sleep, and my hair is falling out which is something that shouldn't happen, especially at 15. Woody, I need help, and I don't know how to stop this torture. A reply or text on Mail Monday would be great. Bullying is super difficult to deal with. I, it, it freaking sucks. And also, I would maintain that the typical anti-bully advice you get blows, right? There, there's two schools of thought. One is, oh, just ignore them and they'll go away. Really? Because high school kids who are picking on someone else have shown a remarkable resilience with regards to being able to keep up the same line of bullying for outrageous periods of time. Yet it, it, Ignore a bully and he'll go away. Dude, bullies will hang on to this stuff for years. Adults don't face this sort of thing. You know, if you look a bully in the eyes, Warong, they'll beat you up. That never happens at the office. That's bullshit, right? Anyway, I'm, I'm going off topic. The other advice that people often get with regards to handling bullies is just punch them in the nose. They're actually scared, whatever, whatever. Again, bullshit. Because, you know, typically... People who are bullies do so because nature selected them. They gave them this ability to bully other people. You know, bullies aren't usually the smallest kids in class. That'd get corrected fast. Bullies are the kids who are in eighth grade and have beards already. Bullies are the kids who, you know, for whatever reason, can beat up 95% of their little, you know, population there. And, uh, you know, that's why they get away with the ridiculous behavior that they go for. So... Anyway, how do you actually deal with this? Assuming that, you know, the regular bullshit isn't going to work for you, that you can't just beat up your bully or ignore him. Uh, I think at your level here, you know, thoughts of suicide, uh, losing hair, stress, stuff that's bothering you when you're not in school, um, temptation to ditch being so overwhelming that you're not showing up at PE. When you're at your level, then... It's time to uh, to bring in the parents. That's 
that's the way this is. Um, you, you know, unless you've got some, you know, super friend on the football team who can just sort of declare you as off limits, you know, which would be nice if you had that. Um, I think you can bring your parents in, have them show up at the school and say, look, you know, these four guys are picking on this one guy. This is not cool. This is not honorable. This is not anything. And it stops right now. And, you know, if adults properly lay down the law like that, it can actually work. And, you know, you, you know, a 15 year old getting picked on by four people shouldn't be dealing with this by yourself. You know, this is a situation in which some parents jump in there and help out. That's the deal. Um, it, it's, it's too much for a 15 year old boy to deal with four guys who are being told jackasses to him. Um, get your parents to talk to the principal, to talk to the gym teacher, to lay down the law and make it never happen again. Um, you know, I, I don't want you to see this and say, no, no, no. If they see that they'll spot it as weakness and they'll try to whatever, you know, ramp up their activities even more. Dude, it's ramped up. You've got to try something, you know. If you had a six-sided die and you rolled it, right now you've landed on one. You don't say, oh no, what if I get a zero? It's not going to get worse. Give this a shot. Bring in some parents. Tell them to the school. Level with your parents. Let them know the severity because I imagine that you're hiding it from them right now. Stop that, right? You know, involve parents in a way that lets them know that you expect actual help and... um you know, roll with it. I, good luck, man. You know, I, I wish I could go in there and choke him out for you. All right. If you enjoyed Mail Monday, be sure to give it a like. If you're new around here, you can click subscribe in the top right. And here's two videos you may have missed. You're probably looking at them for a little bit now. <laughs> so have a good day.